That's my wife. Hello, welcome back to another episode of A Murder at the End of the World, Episode 6. Breakdown and recap, Darby makes the big old mistake. In the show penultimate episode, our amateur detective finally reckons with Bill's killing. Warning, spoilers ahead and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. A Murder at the End of the World has been a victim-focused show from the very beginning. Even though we're searching for a murderer, the episode stands out from the crowd because of Darby's ability to piece together the crime by focusing on the life that was taken rather than the murderer. And although Darby's training has been repeatedly highlighted by the flashbacks, it appears that she has forgotten about it. Five weeks later Darby acknowledges that she committed the big old mistake, concentrating on finding the murderer instead of attempting to comprehend the person who was killed. This insight represents a turning point for the program, enabling writers Marling and Batmanglidge to declare their theory regarding whodunits, victims are important murderers are not. The program does a great job of drawing attention to this frequent instance of domestic abuse again, victims matter, killers don't. The lessons that were learned during those times, as Lee points out, cannot be undone. Given how ordinary Andy's crimes are, she is aware of this. He's a strong man, like many others, and he used his position to court Lee throughout the doxing incident that drove her into hiding. Darby presents this in the right way, she trusted the richest, most powerful man on earth when he said he would take care of her. How was Lee meant to respond? However, Lee made a mistake. Lee tried to flee with Zoomer before the retreat. One day, after dropping him off at school, she went to Six Flags to exchange cars and then drove to the cabin of a buddy from high school in Nova Scotia. Andy was waiting for her when she got there. On the private jet flight home, he told her, you can go, but Zoomer stays. Oliver, who at last enters the game formally and ought to have been there the entire time, solidifies the resistance against Andy and Lee's story. Darby understands that she committed the big old mistake at this point. She neglected to look at the victim since she was preoccupied with thinking about the murderer. It's time to investigate the crime scene in person. When the Scooby gang visits Bill's room, Darby smells her deceased ex-boyfriend jumper for the first time. It's difficult to accept that this is our first thorough inquiry into Bill's passing. True, Darby hasn't always had access to the deceased's previous residence or his body, but the show has definitely diverted our attention by depending more on the hotel's cutting-edge surveillance than on time-tested deductive techniques. Bill's possessions were full of hints that Darby could follow. For instance, I believe this is the first time we've heard that Bill was killed by a blow to the head rather than by heroin, which explains why there was so much blood in the room. The resolution of Darby and Bill's Silver Doe Enigma also aligns with the concept of the big old mistake. Taking us back to the first moments of the episode Darby and Bill are reciting the names of his victims while the Silver Doe killer has a gun to his head. In addition to helping Darby regain her composure, Oliver teases her mercilessly for her big whiff, which gives her the opportunity to ultimately find Bill as she had promised in the previous episode. Oliver reminds her, that's where all the blood is, offering some much-needed surrogacy from the crowd. Darby fears that the show is dragging its heels at this stage. Bill is shocked and covered in blood after the explosion, but Darby isn't satisfied when he discovers who killed him. She felt deflated upon realizing that he was simply another domestic abuser in a world full of them. The neighbor doesn't call the police when she knocks on their door until Darby mentions the victim's name. Once they're back at the motel, she still shows interest in the murderer, his motivation, and what was going through his eyes. Bill informs her that murderers aren't very special. They are unremarkable, uncomplicated, and not fascinating enough for Darby to almost fetishize them. The victims are what really count. The women led our detectives to the conclusion of death. The murder was just one more thing that bound them together. Darby doesn't seem to be happy, so in the morning he leaves, throwing his devices into the pool and taking off into the world of art. In addition to helping Darby regain her composure, Oliver teases her mercilessly for her big whiff, which gives her the opportunity to ultimately find Bill, as she had promised in the previous episode. But getting there is a bit of a mixed bag, as Darby stumbles over her own words when attempting to justify her decision to omit the gory piece from her live readings. Oliver reminds her, that's where all the blood is, offering some much-needed surrogacy from the crowd. Darby fears that the show is dragging its heels at this stage. Bill ultimately departs from Darby for that reason. As Darby described it, she didn't want to read the chapter because she didn't want to acknowledge all the ways she had already broken up with him. This landing as well as it does is a credit to the work Corin has put in during the season. Throughout the season, we saw two different Darbys develop. Thank you for watching.